G'day guys and welcome to today's episode of Idol Talking uh, with Nolsey. Uh, with this year's Australian Idol Grand Final just about to happen, uh, we thought we'd go back uh, and get one of the previous Idol winners on the show. So Tim, who have we got? We have season three winner, Kate DeRouge. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> How you going, darling? I'm good, and yourself? I'm good. I'm good. Running around like a bit of a blue tail fly today, but, but it's all good. We're here and we're into it. We're doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. So, how are you going, Tim? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm great. We had a, we've had some great uh, episodes reviewing the show, so it's nice to have a guest back on again. Yes, a hundred percent, hundred percent. So, Don, welcome, welcome to the show. Uh, we're a little bit off the cuff here. We're just flying I'm by like the seat of our <laughs> pants. So, ah, yes. <laughs> so, just have some fun, and we'll be all good. So, have you been uh, straight off the bat? Have you been watching Idol this year? I have. I couldn't help myself. I was like, nah, I'm not watching it. But um, <laughs> I have watched it um, in the background. Um, I've had it on every night and it's good. You know, there's some, it brings back a lot of memories. It does. And Absolutely just does. Watch it go, wow. Like to know what goes on behind the scenes and what's happening behind the cameras and in the ad breaks and the feelings yep. and the, um, the anxiety that I see on those kids' faces. I just yeah. Boys, um, but yeah, it's it's really good, and there's some really good talent on there. There's some young girls that are really great. Yep, yeah, absolutely. But it, I, I can fully uh, agree with that. As soon as you hear some of that music, you go, just a little bit. That old tick comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it yeah. is. I have uh, uh, felt the excitement as well. Though I was saying um, just in our top six episode earlier in the week. Um, uh, it was down to, I think a couple of the guys and, and I, I was just sort of going, wow, I've got no idea who's going to go. And they're both so good, you know, and yeah. it, it was sort of that, uh, that real excitement that, that I suppose everybody, everybody feels at home when they're watching it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so who, who, um, who, what's your pick though? What do you, who do you think is going to well, be look, there? I, um, I'm a massive fan of Phoebe. I don't know what she does when she sings, but it just, it, it gets me. It, it, yeah. It, me in the fields um you know i think some singers just have that thing that you can't explain and you yeah. can't teach yeah um, and i reckon that she's got it and i also really like josh but phoebe would be my pick yeah she, well she hasn't put in a bad performance really phoebe has she she's been really yeah. rock solid um i i sort of look at it as i don't know if she's grown as much as some of the others but because she was so good at the start you know she was just right yeah. in, right in the pocket at the start and, uh, and, and I think, you know, it's really hard to, you know, uh, get better and better with that. Um, but she's really played a strong hand, but I just think maybe a couple of the other, um, Josh maybe, and, and, uh, and Royston's been on such an emotional journey, uh, with it as oh, yeah. well. So he might, he might, uh, receive a fair bit of support, uh, on that front. But I think Josh to me has, like, he's been behind the piano. I think he's played guitar and, and he's, and he's walked around solo as well. So I think he's showed a lot of, a lot of different, um, uh, abilities during during the show so you know it'll be uh it'll be really interesting but but yeah, t yeah t then, quick turnaround and then there's that thing of like um you know she's just a baby yeah absolutely she'd be better to just go and grow yep. um get some more feathers in her cap and just that mm -hmm. little bit more um life under her wing you know yeah um, absolutely for sure how yeah. old were you though when you won uh i just turned 18 oh, wow. so, yeah you were young too yeah. wow yeah. I was the old Uncle Idol, Uncle Idol of 27. I was. I slept in the age bracket. <laughs> Only just by three months yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. What was the experience like, you know, for you each week in Idol? Was it something you enjoyed? Was it something you struggled with? All of it. I did all of the things, you know what I mean? I think, you know, and I, I'm still the same, really. Like at the end of the day, I was just this country kid who didn't really know what she was doing, just knew she liked to sing songs yep. um, and went on this show for the third time um, and didn't really have any expectations the third time. And I just, I think every week my biggest was, I was just shocked to still be there. Yep. Um, and it was, um, you know, which has been a problem through my life. I couldn't believe in some ways, I know I don't know if I thought I deserved to be there. Towards the end, it was. Um, oh no! But that you won. You got a great voice. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. Imposter syndrome. Yeah, it was just yeah. hard for me to believe every week that I was still standing. You know, yeah. with the talent that was around me, um, and it was exciting and terrifying. And then there's just the thing: if it goes so fast, it's it's sort of it's hard even to remember some yeah. of it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, there's been a lot of talk um, during this season about you know reinventing the songs and choosing a song, but then then completely re 
uh, redoing the song, or reproducing it, or, or, or whatnot. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because I'm sort of of the opinion that it's a singing competition. Let's let's see, because people can get a real gauge off uh, your abilities if you, because they know the song, the format that they know the song. If you know what I mean, like if you yeah. go changing it all around. Um, just to show your, 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 your artisticness or artistry or whatever you want to call it. Um, yep. Sort of people, people, people find it hard then to gauge if you did a good performance or not because they're so used to the song the way they heard it. Now, what, what yep. are your thoughts on that? I'm talking, look, both ways. Like I found the conversation that Kyle and Harry had the other night really interesting. Of Me like too, Kyle yeah. going, it's exactly what you said. It's a singing competition and Harry mm -hmm. going, well, you know, I'm a muso so I want to see more. Um, you know, most of the public are just that. They're the public and they know what they like. Yeah, um, absolutely. I kept, I mean, I kept it pretty straight down the line. I didn't change any of my songs up. No, I didn't I didn't do any, change any of mine either. But no, again, but I think, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you can make a song your own without having to change it up. You know, I think yeah, you, deliver, yeah. you, can be, um, you can you can take it to your own places without having to totally deconstruct a song. Yeah, and I think a lot of times too, a lot of the, the contestants on these shows are, are singers who, who, you know, who do cover bands or like there's not yeah. too many out there who have been through the show. I think there's been a handful probably over the years, but who are, who are composers, singer-songwriters and that sort of thing, you know, and that's all well and good to, to totally, you know, revamp a song if you have that knowledge. But a lot of people, you know, don't read music and they, and they just, they're, they're great at what they do as, as in singing and, and, and performing at pubs and all that sort of thing. To, to expect people to turn around and all of a sudden put a musician hat on or, or a you know, composer's hat on sort of thing and, and really uh, completely change everything up um, from the original is it's just that added pressure to an already yep. pressurised situation. Because, um, you know, I mean, being, being there, you, know, you and I both know firsthand that, it is an absolute mind, um, uh, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. because <laughs> <One of those, laughs> you, yeah, you, you've got so much pressure week to week, you know, you're learning, you're learning your song for the week, you, you um, out of all the songs and that you get to choose and the group song, then the group dance moves and, and they, and our year they were taking it, uh, taking us out to, to venues Promo. night before, the night before, gig, the night before the performance show. And I remember we were at a, at some place in, uh, in Oxford street. Um, at, until like eleven, uh, one o'clock, doing a doing a, a a song together in the top six or something, and then we had to go back and try and get some sleep, and then do the the uh, the the, the uh, song show the next night, and then obviously the elimination night after that. So there, it's a, there's a lot on your plate whilst you're in the, in uh, in that in the house or well in, in the competition. So you know, I I think you know, just let them sing and and uh, work out the rest after they get out the other end. I, I can understand it would be very beneficial to be able to have that knowledge and have that experience to be able to, you know, um, create melodies and new melodies and, and chord progressions and, and whatnot. But I oh. just think at the time, just let them bloody sing, you know. Let them sing their songs and, and the rest will work itself out. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. So, mate, soon after uh, after you won, you released uh, your album, A Place uh, a Place I've Never Been, which is an ARIA Top 10 album and achieved platinum sales, um, how, which is a great effort. Uh, how long do, uh, was your recording process after the show? Was it like really well, a fast? Week, a week, maybe. A week. Four, I think it was four, maybe five days. Wow. So we're doing like two songs in a day and things like that. Two songs in a day, <laughs> night, and then in the middle, wow. and then in the middle, I think I had to go and spend a day filming the film clip for maybe tonight. Yep. Um, and it was just, it was just, you know, it Hectic. was just a million mile an hour from the from the day that I they said you're in the top twelve. Yeah. To the end, it was just, it was just wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I recorded an album in, uh, in, in LA and I went over there and we, we did all the pre-production for the album. We rehearsed, we did it as a live band in, in the, uh, in the studio all playing together. And, uh, we just, kept, we had finished all the production, final, final production. I went, then I went back over and got, um, I just got a cold, you know, and, and like, I, it ended up being, I had like four days left before I had to fly home to, to cut yeah. all the lead vocals. So I was just like, oh, how, how the hell am I going to do this? Because when I first started recording, I remember, I think Learn to Fly, it was I spent, I think it was 12 hours in the booth trying to trying to nail just it. get it right and nail it, you know what I mean? And now, uh, thank goodness, you, you learn over time. I'm in and out in 45 minutes now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sign of my age probably. <laughs> well, that, you learn to be that, a little bit more accepting of your, of your voice too, you know. Yeah, what, oh, you learn all about, learn what, how to get out of it, what you need out of it, I suppose. Yeah. And, and, and a bit, diff, bit different these days too. I'm probably a lot more involved in the writing process of the song. So, you know, you go in there with that, with that uh, knowledge of the song. 
um, before before you you have to try and you know be in the pocket and and really feel the lyrics and emotionally connect and and all those things. So, so yeah, so so that was a, a a week. Wow, that's and a film clip as well. I reckon it was a week. It, yeah, I reckon it was yeah, just. Yeah, a bit that's fun. crazy. Absolutely crazy. I uh, just looking at the stats. So y- your album came in at number ten. Did fifteen thousand. 638 units in the first week. If you did that now, you'd get number one three times. Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. yeah it's, it's crazy how it's all changed and it's just a different world now. And I've been away for a little while, you know. Um, yep. I needed to take some time out um, just to reevaluate some things and, and put some, um, just to redirect my life a little bit. Yep. And um, it's, it's a different world to come back to. It really mm. is. It's a different generation of um, getting your name out there, like all this social media. I'm terrible at social media. I'm not, like, I, I have to get better at it, but it's just a different land to operate from. Oh, massively, yeah. Because, you, you know, like, because you're on, uh, you know, people who are really proactive on social media are forever seeing an opportunity to post something on social media. <laughs> like when I'm they're out, when they're going, like, <laughs> like when they're going to the toilet, maybe they'll find something yeah. to, to post, yeah. you know what I mean? Here's, yeah. me, here's me on the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Whereas I think three days later, oh, that would have been good. For those <laughs> 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 and me too. I come home from a gig and go, damn, I should have posted some of that. So someone should have took some photos. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is a hard one to, uh, it's a nature of the beast, sadly, but it is, uh, it is a tough one to, to get your mind around, to, to spring into action when the opportunity is there and not, uh, not, <laughs> not so much when it's passed. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. So, um, writers on the album, on your first album, included Jewel, uh, Brooke McClellan. I love Brooke. She's such an amazing, yes, an yeah. amazing girl. Uh, the Veronicas. Um, was that before they released anything themselves? The Veronicas? No, no, no. They 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 were not too. They were pretty fresh on the scene, but yep. they've been out for a little while. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great songwriters, the girls, aren't they? They're awesome. I remember seeing them on a red carpet, which just blew my mind. I was totally starstruck. I was just yeah, yeah. on the red carpet and I was like, they wrote my song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That happens too. I, I remember seeing uh, Brett Michaels from Poison showing my age now, but <laughs> yeah. in, in a club in LA, it was pretty cool. And I ended up meeting him too, which is, which is all the more awesome. He's such a nice guy too. You find a lot of times the guys or the people right at the top uh, have nothing to prove and, and they're just really encouraging and, and uh, easy going, which is, which is really, really nice, I suppose. Good. And so, Town Nolsey, tell me, what, where are you? What are you doing? Uh, I've moved up to the Northern, Northern Rivers. So we've got a little block, a little acreage up here, 100 acres. Uh, we've, we've been playing around on. She's a bit of a rough little block. But uh, yeah. I just couldn't stay. Oh, I was over being in the city, you know. Um, my, my, my daughter was uh, four kilometres away to school and it took her like 45 minutes just to get there with the, with the traffic and things like that. So the, uh, And then... With uh, all the idols, uh, all the sorry, all the lockdown COVID stuff, like there was, I, I was right on the edge of um, Greater Western Sydney because we'd moved out of the metropolitan area and were renting a little block just um, out near Bargo, mind you. Um, yeah. And and like I, I was, so I was 500 metres inside Greater Sydney, and there was no cases in the whole area, and I lost like 20 gigs. And then uh, they, they sometimes they replaced me with people from Tasmania flying in for gigs in Queensland. I just went, you know what? where this won't happen <laughs> so much because of the yeah. l- lack of volume of people, I suppose. But, but yeah. yeah, so we decided to get out of the big smoke and, and, um, and head bush. It's, it's been fantastic. You know, it's a little bit extra traveling, which is a bit of a pain in the butt if say, Oh, I think the other weekend I did, I was in four States the other weekend. So I've uh, on a Sunday. So I started out in, in near Port Lincoln, flew out of Port, I'd flew out of Port Lincoln, uh, into Adelaide, then flew from Adelaide to Melbourne, then Melbourne, to uh, the Gold Coast and then drove home from the Gold Coast. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> we, we started, right. kicked, we left at seven o'clock and I got home at 9.30 at night. So <laughs> there's a bit of extra travel with it, but it's well worth, uh, it's well worth it when you get home to, you know, Absolutely. just some, some peace and quiet. So, um, and down the track, we're going to do some things up, up here as well, musically, which, which uh, are really exciting as well. So, so mate, you've got some big news to a little bubba. Yes. Congratulations. My Thank you. He's, That's um, amazing. He's Coming up just four months old and um, you know what? I've done some pretty wild things in my life. Um, <laughs> and this is definitely the wildest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it all changes then, doesn't it? it? Oh, it's just, but you know what? It's been a, the most humbling, beautiful, terrifying um, experience. He's just the best little thing in, in my greatest achievement yet. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Once you, uh, you're a different person for forever after you have, have little ones, it's, aren't you? It, 
it changes in that split second. It's it's um it's very special. It is. It is amazing. Oh, congratulations! What's his name? Hudson. Hudson. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my little fellows. He's so we call him. Uh, he's a free range child. He just, <laughs> yeah. he just he runs around the place out here with no shoes on and and, uh, and has a ball. He's got the toughest little feet. I I walk out there for two seconds and have to put some thongs or something on, but he uh, he just powers on all over the place. Uh, so so Dale, back into your uh, your career stuff. Uh, you yeah. la- you later joined the group the Young Dudes with Pauline and Jess Malboy. Was Ricky Lee in that as well? Yeah, Ricky was in the first round. Right. Um, um, there was two. There was two versions. Um, so there was the first one with Ricky, and then um, Jess, Ricky, chuffed off, and and Jess was in the second round. Oh, right. So was this something that that you were advised to, would be a good idea, or, or was it something you're interested in, in interested in, or, or both, or like what was that experience like with uh, with touring that with the girls? It's been long enough now. I guess I, I like it was something that I that wasn't really on my radar. But I yeah. guess as as you would understand, like you come out of that machine into a new machine, yeah. Um, and you know you you trust and you get directed and you take. Like I was a kid, you know, I was eighteen, and I just trusted and, and took the direction of the people that I thought that were in charge. And um, you know, that's just what they sort of said was the next thing for me to do. So yeah, it wasn't necessarily that I wasn't about it. It just wasn't on my radar necessarily. But it turned out to be um a pretty uh exceptional thing you know what it it took off and it it, it, um we did things that we didn't know we could do and it was um it's it's certainly a time in my life i'll never forget yeah yeah so we did did a lot of big shows and that around around that time too yeah yeah we were like we were lucky enough to do all the cool stuff you know all those big things like grand finals and grand prix and you know doing your four states in a weekend and You know, two gigs in one night, not knowing where you are when you wake up, and all that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, learning so, and it was it was adrenaline always in that stuff. We were learning songs on planes and um, on the way to gigs and and all of that sort of stuff. So it was it was um, yeah. I just look back and smile. I must say, it was it was a pretty crazy time. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You girls didn't mind a uh, uh, after show drink either along the way. Did you, you lived it up a little bit? Oh, well, we were four young girls living the lives. Yeah, we had plenty of fun along the way. Oh, yep. good on you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Is there an album as well, I think? Yeah, we did two. Yeah. Yeah, there was This Time I Know It's For Real and the second one was just self-titled. Yep. It's been pretty well documented that, you know, you had some really challenging to- times. Six years sober now. Um, I guess, is that your proudest achievement? You know, winning idols one thing, but you know. Yeah, you know. look, I think, um, and it, look, I'm I'm a really open book talking about it, and I'm about to start a podcast and a, and a channel myself because it's you know I'm in a position now. I'm, I'm actually five years clean and sober on Sunday. Oh, congratulations! That's awesome. Um, yeah, so um, you know, my life, I think you know, addiction is a, is a topic that should be talked about really openly, and I think still in this country we're we're not very educated about it. Yep. Um, and I think unless you know somebody or you've been through it yourself, it's something that's really hard for a lot of people to understand. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm just about to start a podcast called Why Do I Feel This Way? And, um, um, yeah, look, my life went on a, on a bit of a, a left field journey and I did some things and went some places that I, you know, never wanted to or didn't yep. intend to. Yep. Um, but it's just where life led me. And um, coming back from that, I think um, it's – you know, having to really turn around and stop and look at yourself and look at your life and, and take responsibility for your life decisions um, is probably the hardest and most terrifying thing I've ever done. But, um, yeah, and I just feel a lot, of, a lot of people don't get to come back from where I got to and I just feel really grateful that I that I am. So, yeah. No, oh, good on you, Don. That's, that's, yeah. that's a great story, a great way to look at it. And absolutely, I, I, you know, especially in this business too, you know, just from – you know, my, I mean, my experience over the years is always someone you haven't seen uh, at, at at every gig, you know, and it's there one night and it's your probably, you know, you could have done three gigs uh, uh, three nights in a row before that and yeah. uh, and, and everyone's on for, up for a party every, every time sort of thing, you know, but uh, it's sort of just the nature of the beast really. It's there one night out to, to socialise and let their hair down and, and um, it, it, it's very hard because they uh, – Sort of go, oh, well, I haven't seen you in so long, you know, what are you going home for? Sort of thing. You go, like, yeah, oh, suddenly, because, suddenly I, it's, 
years later and you haven't been to bed. Oh, I've seen Fred last <laughs> night and Bill the night before that. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's very, uh, it's easily, it, it happens easily in, the, in, in this business, you know, which is uh, all part of it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to get to uh, this story here. I think this is a great one. So um, your socials were hacked by a <laughs> Korean porn site. Yeah. I, want, I, want to, I want you to tell I, me what happened here. This well, is... I don't know. I googled kdarouche.com when I was like, where did my stuff go? And, uh, yeah, that's I just got full frontal Asian photography. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Wow. Um, so did you find that. out, get to the bottom what happened? Or? Nah, it's all gone. So all my, so I've had to start from the start, which, you know, I'm not good at just, socials as it is, but yeah. so I've, um, you know, if you're, if you're out there listening, go and send me, you know, hit me a like or follow or whatever it is yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, they're so, all, all back to the beginning. Yeah, right. So they're all just under your name, Kate Derouge again? Yep. Kate yep. Derouge, yep. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. I think Facebook, I'll, Kate Derouge Music. Yeah, cool. Well, everyone to go and check that out, uh, especially if you want to catch up uh, for your podcast, which, which which was called? It'll be Why Do I Feel This Way? So it'll be later right. on in the year, but we're just sort of getting it together at the minute. Yeah, cool. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome stuff. So you studied civil civil construction as well. Yeah. When, when, <laughs> when, yeah. When did you get uh, time to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I wanted to go and get, it was through COVID, you know, I, um, I just, I'd been doing some other work on, um, some level crossing removals in Melbourne yep. and I, um, I just love watching these big job sites just come to life. And so I went, you know what, I'm going to go get my tickets. So yeah, I went cool. and got all my big machinery tickets, um, my truck license, and I ended up, yeah, working in civil construction, pour and concrete. And I absolutely loved it. It would have been a nice break um, from you can, you can sort of actually feel like you're normal a little bit um, and like like everybody else. It's not you don't it's not normal, but you sort of it's hard to digest sometimes that you that people perceive you differently. You know what I mean? Like just because well, yeah, I mean I'm the you, same. You know I mean? I'm the same whether I'm out there or in here or yeah. foreign concrete or yeah, me too. Yeah, whatever yeah. I'm doing, but yeah, some people look at it differently and some people treat you a bit differently. And what I loved about working with those guys is that they just didn't look at me any differently and they treated me like one of the boys, and it yeah. was. It was great. Yeah, refreshing too, I suppose. That would be uh, yeah. a little bit, you know. That's great. What do you think your greatest challenges were you know, after winning Idol and then, you know, putting that album out? Immediately after that, as a young kid, what did you struggle with? Um, you know what? Uh, what did I struggle with? I struggled um, just to be able to back myself as a young kid and, and put trust and faith in people um, hang on one second. Hey, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> He's just walking in the back door with some fish for me for dinner. Oh, good day, Dad. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I can hear all this rust. No, you're right. No, it happens here too all the time. Don't worry about that. Um, no worries. Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> hey, on you. Uh, sorry, about sorry about that. I'm just trying to be quiet. No, that's me. great. My biggest challenge. Yeah, so look, my biggest challenge would have been, I guess, as I said, as a young girl, just um, just having that confidence and backing yourself and just having no idea what I was doing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it was. That's the one thing about Idol um, and that getting into the industry that way is that like I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just yeah. singing songs and then you get thrust into this world and, and you know, you've got to learn who to trust and who not to trust and mm -hmm. who's genuine and who's not genuine and I I really struggled with that because I wear my heart on my sleeve you know yeah I, mean? I agree yeah I know so much trouble, <laughs> <laughs> so, much trouble. <laughs> so many times yeah I'd, I'd have an opinion or I'd have stuff to say and it would be the wrong thing to say yeah. and I didn't know and um yeah so I guess it was just immaturity and just um, just, I just, you know, made some wrong choices along the way, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I mean, me too. Don't worry about that. You know what I mean? I yeah. think that's, that's just nature to be honest, but I mean, you know, we're considering, you know, you and I couldn't have been any further from the, this industry growing yeah. up or, or anything to do with our lives that it was, couldn't be, couldn't have been further from, from how the industry works or, or how that whole, this whole machine works. Um, no you know, absolutely couldn't be further. So I think it was a big learning curve and, and, uh, but definitely for me and obviously for you as well. Um, so what, what advice would you give to, to the guys in the, in the top three or, or anyone, uh, cause there's been some really talented, uh, kids, um, Amali and that as well, who've gone off. Um, yep. what would you say to them, you know, just after the show, post show, like advice? Um, trust your gut. 
you know, I think mm -hmm. that was one of the things that I regret, like one of my regrets after the show is that I, I, I didn't trust my gut and my own instinct. Like, um, but as far as the show is concerned, like, love it for what it is. Enjoy it. Did you get it? No, fucking. <laughs> sorry, it's doing my head in one well, fucking fly. Yeah. And no, I like, that's it. I think the, um, I think it's just like enjoying the experience for what it is. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, you're, you know, you're an excellent example of it. You don't have to win to, to succeed in that mm. show. It, it puts you in the best position um, and all the opportunities. And it's really about what you do after the show. It's really about what you take yeah. and, and where you take it from there. I mean, it's, it's an opportunity and it, and, and what you do with it is really yours. For yeah. The taking, yeah. You know? Tim and I've been talking about it. Um, over the last few weeks, just saying how we uh, we don't uh, necessarily agree with it. Oh, you're a star, you know. I can see you're, you're ready to go straight on the stages in front of 20,000 20, people, <laughs> and I'm sort of going like, oh, I think there's a bit of work to do and, and a bit of yeah. luck to be had um, after after the show. The show's great and fun and all that, and it, it really puts you on the radar. But it's uh, it's a it's a very first stepping stone in a in a lot yeah. of stepping stones that to, uh, to to actually have some longevity and, and get up there and, and make it and make a, a bit of impact. You know what I mean? Exactly right. And I think that's it. It's that first, it's the first tiny little step. Um, and the steps never end. You got to keep yeah. rolling and keep inventing and keep reinventing. Um, yeah. It's not something that you can lean on for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to keep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, you got to keep, keep, uh, yeah. Get, bringing new stuff out and working on new ideas. Well, look, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> it's a perfect, a perfect example of what we're, talk, what yeah. we're talking about. So um, you were back on stage last year to sell our crowds with the Metrop uh, Met Metropolis Touring Fleetwood Mac Orchestra shows. What was that like? Yeah. Great experience? That, was, that would have been great. Awesome. So Fleetwood Mac's awesome anyway. Yep. Um, but to do it with George Ellis, if you ever want to see something pretty special in an orchestra, look up George Ellis yep. um, Orchestra. Um, but yeah, to, to do those songs, um, to those crowds with that orchestra behind me was just, was a first for me and a brand new experience. Um, and yeah, awesome. Yeah. Right. So that would have been, yeah. What great songs to play. Yeah. They're, they're, they're hard. Those Fleetwood Mac songs, you, uh, they sound really simple, but they're so unique in the way they deliver and their phrasing and Stevie yeah. Nicks just a master. So yeah, yeah. Um, it was a real, really good challenge. So um, who else was in that? Was anyone else we'd know? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I had uh, Mark Williams. He's always oh, right. Yeah, Mark. He's great. Yeah, Mark's terrific. He's always good. Such a professional yeah. and such a good yeah. guy to work with. Uh, Tanya Doko from Bachelor. Girl. Oh, she's great. Yeah, Tanya's terrific. Yeah. Love Tanya. She's also great. Um, and Jess and Matt. Um, I don't know if you know them. They're a, a husband and wife duo that uh, came off. I want to say X Factor, maybe or Idol. Well, anyway, they yeah, are yeah, um, one of them. Yeah. The same, one of those ones. Um, and they're also great. So yeah, yeah, it cool. Was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, excellent. Oh, that, that would have been that would have been a bit of fun. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what are your plans uh, now with music? Um, where can we hear some? Have you got anything new coming out, or are you working on your yeah. material, or anything like that? Yeah. So one of the one of the things that I didn't get a lot of opportunity to do in my early days of Idol and what have not was write my own music. Yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, so I, I've got some stuff to say. I've done some living and seen some things and been yep. some places. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to sort of put pen to paper and, and I've just started writing some new stuff. Yeah, um, great. So hopefully later in the year that'll be out. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, and, and the, I think there's a lot of times that we do, we do here in the show, uh, here on Idol, people saying like, you know, it's, it, you're very uh, mature to be, to be performing lyrics like that when they're, people are so young, you know what I mean? So I think it yeah. does. It's you're probably in the best best position to write anything that you've ever have been because you've you've got stuff to write about, you know. But I've got some stuff to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm living. Yeah. Oh, well, cool! I'm looking forward to hearing that. I was just gonna ask, and you've probably answered this already, but I, I assume if we feel you have more to offer now that you're a more compelling proposition as someone who has lived a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Do I feel I have more to offer? Is that what, mm, um, yeah. Yeah. Look, I I guess I I don't know if I've got more to offer. I'm I'm just I guess I'm just that you know I'm just those few more years older and those few more years wiser and um, you get a bit calmer as you get older too. I think you know um, things you I, I look at things a bit differently. And again, you know I hate to keep coming back to it, but to have to have gone on that adventure that I've been on and to come out the other side, just things that, like perspective that becomes a little bit different. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I used to, I used to care so much about what everybody thought um, and it would destroy me um, if I couldn't keep everybody happy or every comment on the internet wasn't positive or whatever. Um, and, you know, I've, I've actually been able to come out after doing a lot of work and know that, uh, you know, I'm more than those, you know, negative comments yeah. or I'm more than, I'm more than um, all of that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I just think that, that that just puts me in a different I just come from a different place now. I don't know if any of that made sense. But yeah, yeah, no, it absolutely does. I mean, I've found that too. But the social media learning curve has been a really tough, tough one, I think, for a lot of people um, in the sense that you can read 20 positive comments and but one will ruin your day, you know? Absolutely, Floyd. <laughs> because yeah. you're just going like, why, what, what? What did I do, what do, you this, what do, I do to this person? Yeah, and you, know you want to defend I mean? yourself. I was just oh. like, I want to say something to you. <laughs> absolutely, but yeah. It, and then, yeah. then as soon as you – and the hard part too is in text – you can't, you know, the, the way you, the, your meaning behind things is is not not blatantly obvious either. So you can you can text, you can write down a statement and in in a, a different mean it a different way than it than it comes across to, and then it just snowballs sometimes. And and then ever, as soon as you sort of show that you bite back or you respond to to the trolls, then it seems like ten more come out of the woodwork. It's it's a real. Uh, I sort of got yeah. I got right off. Uh, uh, off answering people all together there for a long, long time, you know. I think um, it was just so I wanted to sort of get away from it too. Like I found myself, I, mean, <laughs> I was down there, you know, some, I don't know, some early in the piece with Twitter, I think, and some fan came up to me on time and went, somebody's hacked your Twitter. And I went, yeah. why? And I, she said, oh, the channel no, we know wouldn't say anything like that. You know, because I told this bloke his dad should have worn a condom and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he should have. He should have saved, saved us all the trouble of him wasting yeah. our oxygen. But <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was yeah. pretty funny, but um, pretty crazy times and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, Dan, well, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, we thank really, you, really appreciate it. It's, it's, uh, it's great to see you doing so well and and, um, and uh, really got heaps of stuff. So why do I feel this way? Your podcast will be out later on in the year and hopefully yep. new music as well. And jump on uh, Kate DeRue's music, was it? Yeah, on Facebook yep. and just Kate DeRue's on Instagram. Yeah, yep. yeah, no worries. Though. Well, guys, have a look around and uh, she might be hard to find and we'll get uh, build some numbers back up again. And uh, yeah, can <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so I no, really thank uh, thank you for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime, anytime. So uh, thank you. yeah, no worries. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed today's show, please like and follow this podcast on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast, and give the show a rating. Uh, I look forward. uh, Thanks very much, Tim. Good on you, buddy. We look forward to your company next time.